My guest today is the lovely Miss Petra Colbert, um, who I've had the honor of sitting and listening to many, many times over the years, although she didn't know that until just recently, and uh, through the fitness industry. So again, ironically, everyone that I'm connecting with has been through the fitness industry, even if I didn't know it, I just found out Trish was a long time in the fitness industry. So I don't know, something we're all vibrating at the same frequency there, I guess. So our conversation today is going to be about stepping into our greatness and owning the potential that lives within us. And now is the perfect time to be sharing the greatness of who we are with the world around us because it's such a crazy time right now. And it might forever change the face globally, who knows? So we're doing our part by sharing some inspiration and our greatness. So I appreciate you being here today. Um, I am a life coach on the complete other side of North America on Vancouver Island. So I'm close to the trees and the ocean, self-isolating. And um, I've been a professional coach for four years in the fitness industry for 30 years. I am the mother and grandmother. I forgot to say that. I have a brand new grandbaby. And, Congratulations. Uh, I can't see her for seven more days. That's the hardest oh. part. So my guest today is Petra. Um, and Petra, I'm just going to read a really short bio of yours so people have an idea of who you are. Okay. And uh, then we'll have our conversation. So Ms. Petra is a public speaker. She's a writer. She's a coach. And she's a host who is inspired and influenced by the science of positive psychology. She combines the skills of mindset coaching, the neuroscience of the brain, and has 30 years or more of experience as a wellness expert to help bring out the best in, them in so many amazing individuals. Petra helps individuals and teams get unstuck so they can be unstoppable. Petra is herself unstoppable as she survived cancer not once but twice. And she's here to tell you about her greatness. So thank you so much for being here. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you for having me on, Mia. Thank you. Yeah. So in terms of your bio and our conversation, um, I know a little bit about your history. Of course, the world that's listening doesn't. I have two questions. If you can give us just in a really short nutshell, your story, and, but more importantly, the gift in it. Huh. My story and the gift. Well, which part of my story? Because I have like several volumes. You so, do. Well, people could just read your book, couldn't they? <laughs> well, let me think. So I think my story, let me think what could help the listeners the most. I think my story is, um, you know, everyone thinks you're going to go to the cancer story, right? And, but it's really, that's not the story. The story is whatever you've recovered from. So I think my story, my stepping into this greatness began with a heartbreak. That's, that's the cliff notes. That, was, that would be the movie I would put out there, right? It was a heartbreak. It was a life I thought, I thought I was going to live that suddenly, kind of like the world we're in right now, with no warning, has changed. And there's an amazing uh, poet, and often I don't know the name, but it's like, you know, when you feel that like rug's, rug's been pulled out from your feet, but then the floor is also pulled out from underneath the rug. And then the foundation is pulled out from the floor, from underneath the rug. And that's kind of where we are right now. Mm -hmm. And that was my story five years ago. And unfortunately, that story has helped me now look at this other pivot moment in the universe, that we will all be okay. Mm -hmm. That even when the rug, the floor, the foundation has been stripped away of everything you thought you knew for certain yesterday, and you wake up, Basically, we all are waking up. That's when your heart will break open and you will break open and your story will break open and you will step truly into who, whoever you think this person, God, universe, ha is expecting you to be. Mm -hmm. And you know, so often we hear, you know, it's the change that challenges you, right? And I wish I could tell people otherwise. It sucks, uh, but it's so true. And that was the story. It's like, I never had felt, that was the first time in my life, Maya, I didn't know if I was going to be okay. Mm. I threw my cancer, I knew it was going to be okay. Through the death of my mother, I was knew I was going to be okay. This is the first time that complete um, breaking open of a story of that fairy tale that I thought I was writing with someone was taken away from me. And this was the first time I had to rewrite 
my own story with my own ink of confidence and courage and resilience. And this is what the world is going through now. But what I want you to know, whether you're listening or watching or it's going to be okay. Yeah. We're all scared, but it's going to be okay. What a powerful message. It's such a powerful message. And the piece that I love in your share is that you can rewrite your story. It's a story. Yeah. And you are a character in it for certain. Yeah. And you can edit it often and you can rewrite it and you can write a new chapter and you can write a new ending. And um, the fact that you were able to step outside the story, eventually I'm sure that took a bit of time before you were able to step outside the story and to be able to look back and see it for yeah. the gift that it was. Yeah. And I think that's the thing right now with the world that, you know, this turmoil and fear that we all have, you know, you can write and you can ride with faith and fear, you know, you can Absolutely. have both pens in the hand and it's, you know, you can go with doubt and confidence for the future. You can go with, I don't know, with believe it to be true and meet yourself there. So I really believe we're in this place of and, and reinventing who we are, rediscovering who we are, not just alone now. I mean, if, the, if we're going to rewrite a beautiful story, we're going to be writing it as a global story, not mm. as a individual story. And maybe our stories were just so kind of too small and too, even if we're leaders, maybe our, our reach and our idea and our purpose wasn't big enough because mm -hmm. maybe it stopped at our door or our community or our country. And maybe now our stories have to reach globally to the people we've never seen. I, I just think there's, this is a new time to maybe, maybe we're writing a book that hasn't even been written before. You know, maybe there's chapter a whole, one. You know, yeah, there's going to be a whole new chapter in Barnes and Noble, wherever, yeah. you know, that comes up. And we don't even know what that, that definition is going to be yet. And that's the both the wonderful and the terrifying. And you get to choose where you reside most of the time. I think we both are going to live in wonder and terror, you know, faith and fear. But where do you choose to reside? And here's something, Mia, that really helped me recently. You know, as a coach, you have a coach. And she said, you know, we're going to reside in both fear and hope right now. But make your decisions and make your actions and make your words for the future be ones from your hope. Let your, you know, let your fear be in the moment. But any decisions or actions that are contributing to your future and the future that you're going to influence others with, let those actions be inspired by hope. And if you're not ready for that yet, don't make a decision. Don't make the action. You know, if your action or decision is rooted in fear, and if it can, you know, sometimes right now it's paying the bills, it's paying the mortgage, it's, sure. it's, it, that's a different situation. But if these are decisions that can wait Maybe that chapter can wait for another day. Hold off. Let us recalibrate. We're not even in the recovery stage right now, right? We're kind of recalibrating like, okay. Well, yeah, we're still trying to figure out what's going on. Yeah, and this isn't going to happen today. And whenever you're listening to this, I have no idea how far that ripple effect has gone. You know, are we on the uptick? Uh, are we on the downtick? Who knows? Yep. But in reality, Mia, we never knew what was happening the next day. So this idea of we're so sure of tomorrow and what it brings, it's going to bring a whole new uh, set of questions for us to answer, a whole new set of strengths for us to pull on. And again, I really think I'm not a massive, um, I, I'm not as ethereal as many of my cohorts, but this is a global wake up call. And Absolutely. I really feel like, you know, the universe, whatever you think, she was going, I don't know any other way to get you guys to wake up. I just said that in my last interview. I oh, really? Said, the, I said, Mother Earth is asking if we're paying attention. She's like, I'm suffocating here. You're killing me yeah. with your fumes. You're like ignoring yeah. me. I'm trying to be really kind. And you know, we, we've said, and maybe you've heard me say this, you know, the world, now the universe, they'll throw you a rock, a pebble, or a brick wall. So my cancer is a brick wall. We had pebbles. We had global warning. We were not paying attention. We had rocks. You know, we've had wars. We've had hatred. We've had, you know, uh, racism, all of that. We were not waking up. This is a, if this is not a brick wall, and if we don't wake up to this, 
Huh. Nothing's going to wake us up. Yeah. No. I feel like that the, the, the book that you're talking about that is yet to be read should be, the title of it should be, and not but. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, and it's you and I, not you or I. Yeah. It's uh, we and they, not them or us. You know, yeah. it's um, possible and. and hope. Uh, no, and it's faith and hope. It's unknowing and certainty. It's, it's wisdom and learning. It's the and, but the, the and I would love to see, Mia, more than anything, it's you and I. It's us and them. It's, you know, it's not, it's no, no more it, them or us, you know, me or you. You know, yeah. I get to succeed at your cost or you get to succeed. What does that mean at the expense of I? So if any book we are writing, maybe this is not a book that you or I write. Maybe this is a book that we all write a sentence and then everyone yeah, in our beautiful. communities are writing and weaving the red thread together to write a bestseller for the world, not just for us or our community or even our country. This needs to be a best, a global bestseller for to inspire the world. Yeah, to, to make us all realize we truly are one. Yeah, we are so much more alike than we are different. So yeah, we are and, so not separate. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, so the message I heard in all of that is it's you and I. Yeah. That we're in this together. And head and heart. Because yeah. that's where the individual comes in, right? It, we are so heart-centered or head-centered. I always say that the wrong way. I always say heart and head. We're always like heart-centered <laughs> or head-centered. And now maybe it's the time to close that and recalibrate, you know? Mm -hmm. Lead with our head and our heart. Move through with our heart and our head. And really come back to our values, our purpose, like you talk about. Um, our sense of meaning. And really get really quiet, you know, really, this is a time with all the noise. We have to get quiet more than ever to tap into, into our fears and what's really underneath the fear outside of the noise and tap into, you know, what is our legacy life? What is our legacy play? You know, we're now waking up to go, maybe my time on this earth is not quite as, you know, as long as I thought, you know, we're being challenged on every certainty that we thought. So now is a time to get really quiet. And Absolutely. once you recalibrate, then how are you going to reimagine and reinvent, you know, for good? Absolutely. And you know, that there, that's such a powerful piece because the answers are in the space between our thinking. The answers are in the silence. They're not in the doing and not in the thinking. They right. are in the quietude of the space between yeah. the thoughts. So it's, it's a pretty powerful time to hit the massive reset button and just see what happens globally. Yeah. So, uh, and, yeah. No, go sorry. Ahead. And, I, and I think, you know, there's a time for that, right? So you and I think very much like that's when we first met. I'm like, oh, I love this girl. I want to write me a BFF. And people are not ready to hear that yet. So I'm really careful with my own personal messaging. I'm like, whether you're in the recalibration phase, this is not for you. But if you're like me and you're ready to rebuild already, you know, each day, every day, come with me on this journey. I've got your back. So I, it, and it's, this is, this is the land of and it's, you know, my journey and your journey while different, I respect it all. And the timing is going to be different for all of us. You know, you and I, we, we're going to like put on that fire and then make sure that we don't burn out ourselves. So it's that whole balancing act of head and heart. Um, you and I leader and learner, all of the above. And, and, Wow, is this not make us really pause and reflect on how we want to show up in the world? Absolutely, absolutely. And you know, I, I, again, I want to honor your time, but I want to, I want you to share with people. One of the things that I've uh, talked about with each interview is how people are tapping into their greatness, what portal they're using to tap into their greatness, and what vehicle they're using to take mm. that greatness out into the world. So I want, I would love for you to share with people that are listening how you are taking your greatness out and sharing it with the world. Yeah. And look, and when we schedule this conversation, my, my share would be very, very different to what it is now. So what I'm trying to be now is a servant leader. It's like, I'm reaching out to anyone I had a relationship is how can I, what do you need? Like I used to come with, this is what I can do for you. How, you know, now I'm asking, what do you need? So what, how I'm trying to bring that forward into 
companies I've worked with, companies that I was scheduled to work with. We don't even have a yeah. relationship yet. I'm like, guys, I'm going to be speaking with you in September. What can I do for you now? With the idea of building deep, deep trust. And you can't go with any expectation, but with the hope that that deep trust will transfer when people, you know, kind of get back sorted again because we all have to you know even in purpose you still need to survive and thrive in this thing called the economy so for me it's really about doing community leadership and the way right now zoom is my new best friend yes so you know absolutely it's, it's that that thing where i was really about mia to pivot into going Per live, I was ready to do that. I'm like, well, that ain't gonna happen. So it's a lot of Zoom, trying to get people used to using technology to now connect yeah. like this, even though yeah. it feels a little strange at first, I'm seeing amazing things happen. It's also recognizing we can't do this alone. It's the land of and, and reaching out to other leaders like yourself and building on it. I'm still trying to surprise and delight people, like give them the unexpected. Like, you know, I just started to DJ. So I'm actually right now just finding, um, cause that's the greatest thing that would bring us joy right now is music. So I'm doing half virtual happy hours as soon as I get the legal approval and the, and the way to connect my stereo and my, my equipment to, you know, FaceTime or whatever, or Facebook. So it's just, it's surprising and delight right now. It's how I can surprise, how I can support, how can I be the lifeboat without myself sinking? And that's not the answer I've had for you before. Um, people need to trust that we are there for them for the long game. It's so cool because the word that I circled when I was listening to your share was trust. Oh, yeah. Because that's what, that's what I hear in everything that you're sharing is trust that we can do this. Trust will be okay. Trust we will rise above it. You know, trust we will come together. Yeah. Trust we will learn. Yeah. And trust is an action. You know, we also have to trust ourselves. And I always say confidence happens in action. Confidence, and this is what I teach now, especially now, confidence is trusting you will show up for yourself. And that happens in action. It doesn't happen when we're stuck to the couch, watching the news, watching, you know, what's going on. That is not what we need to do. So it's, you know, it's the recalibrating. It's the land of the end, being what, with what is, choosing to uh, trust that we will come out of it. That's the hope and the faith, but you also then trust yourself that when you take action and you learn the things that you need to learn for this new world, you know? I have so many people in the fitness industry that because you and I have been such a part of the online community, whether we're building or so many dear, dear people are like, how do I get online? And I'm like, oh my goodness. So you have to trust yourself that you will learn the skills. You will trust yourself to be resilient and ask for help. You know, many of us that are really comfortable saying, how can I help you? Are really uncomfortable saying, how can you, can you help me? Yeah. So it's that and too, being that, you know, pyramid of resilience, trusting yourself, trusting that others will be there for you and trusting that there's going to be the learning there, the skill sets that you can learn to move forward into this new world because it's not going to be the same. It's not going to be the same. I agree. The economy is changing and how we all have to show up, uh, whether you're serving or learning or whatever it is you're building, it's going to be that in-person more now than ever. People go, oh my gosh, I, you know, hugs are going to be galore. <laughs> yeah. But we also now know the importance of virtual. If you weren't ready before, we have to be ready now. So it's really, I know, I'm sorry, my, my answer is not as articulate as it would have been a week ago, but it's, I am. I am learning every day in different ways that people need me. And it's really about uh, creating connection, connecting people like, oh my gosh, you live across from, so like I'm doing these community calls in the morning and then I'm realizing, oh, you live in the same place that you're in both in Vancouver. So then it's this, it's the ripple effect. I think it's, it's that pebble rock, not brick wall, pebble, pebble into the ripple effect now. All I want to do is be a pebble and throw it into that ripple of hope and trust and start that wave of someone's thought press that process moving over from the doubt and the fear into hope and possibility and that is the most perfect message that you could share right now 
It really truly is that there, that there will come a day in the not too distant future where the sun's going to shine and everything's going to start moving back in a different direction and we will be a different world and possibly a much better world for it all. Yeah, I hope so. I hope this, you know, we're all going to come out stronger. There's no choice. Really that some people, unfortunately, are not going to make it. You know, there, there's going to be a lot of trauma in the world and a lot of heartbreak and, you know, people that, you know, that are not maybe going to come through this, but everyone that does is going to come through stronger, I hope, because that's your choice that you have control of, you know, with a more inspired mission of purpose that you have control of. And we better all be here for others now, creating our legacy life. This is not a game. You know, life is not a game. I think a lot of us have been sleeping at the wheel. I am guilty of that, even as someone who teaches this stuff. I, I have never been more awake. Let me tell you, this yep, world exactly. has woken me that, up. That's almost like the message that she's saying is everybody just wake up. Yeah. And if we all globally wake up and start reaching our hands out, who knows what, what we can create. Yeah. And with those hands out, Mia, it's a two-way street. How can I serve? And, you know, I also, it's, the, it's now, it's this. Yeah. Whether it's not we're leading or we're taking, we're not giving. It's, it's the land, it's the land of and, right? The land of and. I love that. So when we finish, um, Petra, thank you so much for being here, for being so inspiring and such a bright light in what probably is a very dark time for a lot of people. Your light always shines so bright. Um, and we are going to make sure that we provide some links for people to be able to connect with you or access you okay. or find out what you're doing or how to, how to have you speak with them. I know, um, just as a quick aside, I bought several copies of your latest book, which is the perfection detox, which is quite funny because a couple of times I gave it out. I'm like, I am not a perfectionist, but I totally want to become one just to detox. Cause this book is so good. So, um, we'll make sure that we put that out there as well. Thank you so much. Thank you. So take good care of yourself. Be safe out there in New York where we know there's so much difficulty going on. And thank you for your beautiful smile and for taking time to be with us. Today. Oh my gosh. Thank you. And wherever you are, my heart is with you. Um, my thoughts are with you. And let's really, this is the time to be the change we wish to see in the world. Totally agree. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you.